Well, a sermon series on prayer is what we are we're in the midst of. And you know, prayer prayer kind of has a, a long history in kind of when there's whatever religion and talking about a relationship with God, prayer is a part of that. We know we know um, there's prayer books, we have prayers written in our hymnals, things people have have shaped and written books about. But this series isn't about them. This series is about you and your prayer walk with the Lord and what you can grow in grasping and understanding as you, as you drop down to your knees at your bedside or you're praying about situation with a relationship or, or something in the going on with your future. This is about prayer and you and your, your walk as a, a disciple of the risen Jesus. You know that he's risen He's the Lord, and you want to walk closer. We're exploring prayer. So last week, we had the foundational spot that prayer kind of gives us a a new viewpoint, a new outlook, kind of a God-centered view. Somehow, Somehow when we count our blessings, somehow when we spend time putting humanity into the other person that we might be in conflict. Somehow we're, we're seeing things in this new God-centered way. And, and it's, just, it's not just a matter of, of taking the time to reflect on that. And it's, it's actually inviting God into our situation so that different words, different actions come out of us, different feelings that we end up having. So prayer is, is all that for us. We asked the, the question last week, what are we trying to accomplish with prayer? And it's, that's a good one for a question to keep asking ourselves as we, as we ponder growing in prayer. Are we, are we trying to inform God about something that we think he's unaware of? Is that what we're doing? Are we trying to convince him to do something that it doesn't seem like he's really going to do, but we think he should do it? What, is it? what is it we're trying to accomplish, right? So throughout this series, as you ponder um, your approach to prayer, uh, your schedule, um, your goals with prayer, um, we're going to, to look at today this concept of of our mindset and our heart set as we go into prayer, that moment that we enter into it. Because it seems essential that we do it. So what is it that I can bring to that? Luther said, um, to be a Christian without prayer is kind of like being uh, an alive human and not breathing, right? It just doesn't compute. The the two go together. So as we do that, um, there's a... There's a commercial that I thought of when thinking about a mindset um, that we take in. And I actually um, looked it up, found it on YouTube um, from 1974. And I think you'll recognize the, the campaign series. So there's a, there's a family that gets in the commercial. A family gets out of their car, um, as all families are happy all the time. And the fam- they get happy out of their car. And they're going into the restaurant, mom, dad, boy, girl, and they, they enter in, they come up to the counter, and they give their order, and there's some uh, alterations they're asking for, and apparently it's okay because the, the girl at the counter sings back to them, um, hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, special orders, don't upset us, all we ask is that we, you let us serve it your way. Just how it would, the have it your way Burger King campaign. And, as the, it was funny, as, the, as they're walking away from the counter, the, the dad looks to the mom and says, now that's the way things should be, our way. <laughs> it, that's the approach of, of one way of looking at we go into prayer that I don't see supported in Scripture. As we look at Scripture, the idea of have it your way, that feeling, that we, I don't see that supported. God wants us to pray, but I don't think the Burger King mindset is what we bring in as we approach it. We know we're encouraged 
Paul says, pray continually. James writes, is anyone having troubles? He should pray. So we know that we're to do it. We know that the Burger King mindset isn't it. But there does seem to be a healthy starting spot. When you consider prayer in your life, there does seem to be a healthy starting spot that Jesus modeled, Jesus talked about. Um, the idea of truly opening ourselves up to God's will. There's this mindset, this goal of what we're trying to accomplish is seeking God's will. And I thought about, I pondered on that. And I said, is that, can I do that? Seeking God's will. Because it seems like inherently not being God, I'm going to have some different thoughts there. I'm going to have some different spots that I'm hoping for, right? So I thought, God's will, and I was pondering that, and when a really cool image came up on Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> because uh, when I go to visit my mom, um, she has a great um, structure to her day with prayer. There's the mass on TV in the morning and a little prayer time in the afternoon. But in the evening, it's Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. Those are, those are built into the day. So when we visit, you know, the watching Wheel of Fortune with her. And if you're not familiar with Wheel of Fortune, you, um, there's a big wheel that they spin around and you, you get a little pie shape for, you know, $1,000 or $200 or, or bankrupt, right? And there's that moment where you spin the wheel and sometimes they... They get a nice big chunk of money and they can, they can guess a letter. But every now and then, it hits the bankrupt, right? And I was amazed. I'm like, the, the people were like, they're happy about their money. And then they got the bankrupt and they were like, oh, well, you know, and they kind of like went on their way. And I was kind of upset about the bankrupt thing happening, right? But I thought, they're kind of going on their way there. Oh, I can connect that thought with... God's will because as we spin the wheel of prayer, if we're thinking about it that way, and it lands on us, oh great, super, I've got my way. But if it lands on the God's will spot, and be like, oh, I wish it didn't land there, but oh well. That's not a healthy way to look at that. If it lands there, oh well we're pondering God's will first, it's, it's wanting God's will to come about. So what does it take for me to say, oh, I want it to land on God's will. I want that for my life to land there. That's a good spot for us to go to when we're reflecting on this mindset that we take into worship, this, this healthy attitude when we talk about prayer. So there's this balance that I want us to ponder. The idea of we come into worship with a fear into prayer, excuse me, into prayer with a fear of the Lord. God is awesome, huge, unfathomable, right? Picture Isaiah um, when he has the vision of the Lord, right? He's afraid, right? He's in the, and we have that, and also we have trust. Because God says, come. I love you. We have God's love, his steadfast love. We have fear of the Lord. We have trust. This is, this is where we go to when we think of that moment where you are dropping on your knees to pray, or you're in the hospital room. You have a fear of the Lord, and you have the trust to say, Dad, I have something to talk to you about. You can walk into the great throne presence of God in all the awesomeness of that and say, Dad, I've got something to bring to you. That's our promise. That's our mindset and our heart. A fear of the Lord and a trust. A trust in His love. Scripture shares there's a healthy spot. There's a healthy spot for you to think about. He is awesome. And it is healthy for you to consider how awesome He is. And 
to ponder you can trust coming into his presence. Nehemiah, in that wonderful prayer in the beginning of the book of Nehemiah, has um, he's turned upside down. Um, he's heard about Jerusalem, God's place, God's people. It's all in disarray. He's upset inside. And what do we see him do? He fasts. Seems like there's value to that in prayer. He has himself in sackcloth and ashes. So something about putting himself in a particular position um, with his prayer life. And he launches into a long prayer that I think is poetically a nice balance. We're going to see that he approaches God in prayer because he's having a thought about approaching the king. He's the cupbearer to the king, and he's going to approach the king of the country with a request about Jerusalem. And interestingly, in his fear to do that, he confidently approaches God in prayer. And he approaches with this long list of this healthy spot of saying, God, I'm a sinner. <laughs> Everyone, are, we're all sinners. And I'm, I'm not approaching you with any merit, but I'm coming before you with this thought. That's a consistent pattern that's modeled for us in Scripture. Daniel does almost the same thing. Daniel's going to have a big plea for the Lord. And he, does, he has that same mindset of, I'm coming into God's presence. Then I turned my face, this is Daniel chapter 9, then I turned my face to the Lord, seeking Him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth, sackcloth and ashes, and I prayed, making confession. O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love Him, we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled turning away from you. Seems like there's a healthy attitude, a healthy spot is to come forward acknowledging that we're sinners. There's the mindset. There's the, the healthy spot in our hearts. Just coming forward as humans with all our faults, with all our times that we have not been perfect before him. And we come forward in repentance and say, Dad, I've got something to talk about. That's what's encouraged. And we can do that confidently. We can do that confidently knowing we go before the awesome throne of grace because, as Wendy read, we, have, we are sinners um, who have a Savior because he who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, God the Son walked our walk, lived our life, and conquered sin and death. We can approach the throne of God as sinners, knowing we're sinners. We can approach the throne of God through faith in a sinless Savior. There's our, our confidence. There's the hope that we live in. There's this healthy attitude of just being repentant in our heart as we come forward. Nehemiah said, I'm a sinner. Daniel said, I'm a sinner. And I'm coming to talk to you. But we come knowing of his great love. We come knowing that he has made the way. And he does say, come, come, walk closer. It seems that a heart that honors God is the spot to be at. There's some challenging things in Scripture about a heart that doesn't honor God and then wanting to turn in prayer because we're looking to grow in our understanding of prayer. James writes, You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly that you may spend it on your own pleasures. In Psalms, If I regard iniquity or cherish iniquity in my heart, so the walking away from God crookedly, if I desire that, the Lord will not hear. It seems that it seems that, that spot of coming with a repentant, open heart is when God listens. God doesn't say He listens to our prayers all the time. If we're walking in iniquity, 
insincere with him. In Jeremiah, the Lord is saying to the people, Thus they love to wander. They've not restrained their feet. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. He will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. That's powerful for us to reflect on. Refusing to be at that repentant spot before God. So as we, as we grasp our walk of, with the Lord and our relationship with prayer with Him, um, this prayer and you, why do we pray? We pray because He asks us to. He invites us to. He encourages us to. He wants us to. And it makes a difference. All that opening up our heart, all the counting blessings, we seek to know His will, His ways, as we pray. We remember His steadfast love. We, we pray a psalm and we, we see it repeated over and over again of what He's done for us. And we believe in a God of miracles. We believe in a God that transcends space and time. People rising from the dead, walking on water, lame, healed. So as we go into prayer, we do so trusting. We come with our sin. We come knowing, knowing that we've transgressed, broken trust with Him. We know we come knowing we might have walked in iniquity and we come repentant with our hearts and say, Dad, I have something to talk about. And we bring that and then we open up our hearts about the thing in, in our lives, the thing we're praying about, about our loved ones, about our future, our hopes, our plans, our jobs. But we do so trusting, trusting that He does care and He has made the way so we don't come looking to have it our way, right? But we come seeking that the one who has made the way, the truth and the life, wants the best for us. And he wants his peace in our hearts throughout all our days. We seek to grow in our walk of prayer in this series. Amen.